Leveling up. Extreme business growth through raising your game. When what was once extraordinary becomes ordinary, you know you've leveled up. Hello and welcome to the Leveling Up podcast with me, George Swift. The Leveling Up podcast is here to give you the personal development, the entrepreneurial development and the business growth that you, the ambitious business owner, desires. We're here to give you the inspiration, the motivation and to challenge your aspirations to take you and your business to the next level. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. Today, I wanted to share with you my applied learning formula. This enables you to gain the wisdom that is both within you, but also the wisdom that is everywhere around you. The clues that you're looking for, the ideas you're looking for, the knowledge you're looking for is literally saturated in your world. However, more often than not, we don't get our hands on it. We don't tune into it. So my applied learning formula is actually the formula that I've been applying in my own life for many, many years, long before I ever knew I was actually doing it. So when I was at school, I wasn't particularly a great student. I was averagely good. So I did okay. I got what I needed. I went and did my levels, really bummed on those. Later in life, I went back to university, did quite well at university. And uh, yeah, then I got into this game and some other businesses as well. And I kind of got my passion back for learning. And I didn't really understand what had gone on other than I'd gone from this really kind of average student that was a little bit disinterested and disconnected from education to suddenly devouring content everywhere. I remember thinking, you know what? I was always so interested in people's stories. I remember at such an early age learning about cuticles and hair follicles and split ends from my hairdresser when no boy that age should even have that thought on his mind. I remember also, you know, talking to plumbers and I would talk to sports people or teach anyone that would talk to me. I remember taking real avid fascination in their life. I would learn from them. I didn't even know that's what I was doing. I was just massively interested. And the thing I realized was really simple. When I was at school, the learning was not contextual. It was academic learning. It was learning for the sake of learning. And the only reason I needed to learn it was so I could regurgitate it at an exam to get enough so I could just move forward, right? to go from O-levels to A-levels to whatever came after that. And I did kind of the barest minimum that I had to because there was no context around it. I then considered myself very anti-education. I didn't consider myself very academic, even though I did go back to university some years later and came out with the first class honours. I then went back and did my master's degree. I then went back and ended up lecturing in university. I've also realised in my time that I've kind of been an educator my entire life. I was running kickboxing clubs, martial art clubs, self-defense workshops, et cetera, all around London. I've done all these different jobs, even the one I do today. And I never really considered myself a teacher or an educator because I kind of had this mental block around education. So here's what it's about. It's context. When we are in the presence of any information or any knowledge, if it has no context to us, we genuinely switch off. You'll learn something you need to learn because you need some sort of outcome, but you won't truly take passion in learning from it unless it has context to you. In other words, it means something to you and it really matters to you or you're interested in it. So my applied learning formula is something that I realized I'd been applying for many years but hadn't really broken it down. And now I break it down and literally every single member of my success group and every member of my mastermind, I go through this applied learning formula with them so that they get the most out of whatever it is that I'm presenting to them. Here's another thing that really changed for me. When I first started doing this game, when I first started talking to business owners and entrepreneurs and started running workshops and talks and even on the big stages where I might be talking to hundreds of people, I kind of felt like it was my responsibility to shove this knowledge physically into the brains of everybody in the audience. And even on things like this podcast now, and when I used to do video, there's that natural tendency in me that, you know, you're listening. I want you to get 
what I'm trying to say. I want you to get this knowledge that's in my head and that has helped me and has helped so many other people. I want to help you. I want it to stick. I want to get it in your head. I want you to learn it. I want you to know it and I want you to apply it. And there's that tendency in me that I want to take it and I want to take the knowledge and ram it right down your throat, right? Now, of course, that's exhausting. It puts a ridiculous pressure on myself. And of course, I can't possibly achieve a 100% result. I can't possibly get my information into everybody's head that's listening. So what I realized was, is instead of me taking responsibility for you learning something, I would just take responsibility for broadcasting it. And I'll broadcast it in the best way I can so that I give you the best possible opportunity of tuning into that broadcast and taking action on it. So I liken myself now. If ever you come to one of my workshops, especially ones for the general public where they don't know me very well, I'll go through this process every single time. And I say, you know what? My job is I'm the antenna. I'm the broadcaster. I'm the radio producer. I broadcast the information. I broadcast the knowledge. Your job is to tune into that. So you're in your car on your radio. You don't expect radio one or whatever it might be to ram itself through your radio. What you want to do, and you know you have to do this, is you have to tune your radio into the broadcast that you want to hear. So if you're listening to this podcast right now, I'm assuming you want to learn something. I'm assuming you want to improve your life and improve your business. And therefore, your responsibility is to tune in to my frequency. Now, how this works is if I'm sitting there and I suddenly talk about an an accountant, as an example, and you're an accountant, your ears will pep up and you'll tune in and your brain will say, this is really relevant to us. There's context to that learning, right? And you'll pay attention and you'll hear and you'll listen and you'll learn that part of the content. Then I'll talk about maybe a builder or marketing, or maybe I'll talk about one of my own references in my own life. And suddenly that reference doesn't mean anything to you. And your brain will drift off again. And you'll go back to your phone or you'll look at email or you'll go and do something else. Or you'll literally hear the words, but just tune out. And I'll say something else that's relevant to you. I'll say something like, you know, are you really struggling to make your finances balance? And you'll tune in because it's finance, it's balancing, it's what you're interested in, it's in your game, it has context to you and you'll tune back in. What that means is, of course, is if you're passively just listening to maybe a podcast from me or you're in a seminar, you're in one of my workshops or you're in success groups, you might listen to me for an hour, but you might only hear 10 minutes. You've missed so much of what I've got to say because your brain didn't switch onto it because your brain didn't think it was relevant or didn't see the context of what I was saying as relevant to you. And your brain is always discerning, should I pay attention or shouldn't I pay attention? It's always listening. So even when you drift off and start looking at the wallpaper, your unconscious is still listening to my voice. And if I say absolutely anything that it thinks is relevant, it will get your attention and pull your attention onto what I'm saying, and then you'll learn. So my applied learning formula is just a step-by-step process that you go through at the end of any business book you've read or any chapter that you've read, um, at the end of every podcast that you hear from me or anybody else. If you go to a seminar or a work meeting, you go through this little process and what you do is you want to simulate the information that was just being spoken or just being presented and you want to take from it what you need to take from it, what's relevant for you into your business, into your life. So I want to give you these questions that you need to ask yourself at the end of any opportunity that you have to learn anything at all, even if it seems like what you're being taught isn't relevant to you. This will pull the wisdom out of what you've just been presented or what you've just listened to or heard or read. So the first question you ask yourself at the end of any content piece is you ask yourself, what does this mean to me? Okay, what does this mean to me? In other words, like it's not my words anymore. You take ownership of the content because I want you to take what's in my head and rather than you referencing something in my head which lacks a little bit of context to you, I want that content 
to actually be your content because if it's your content, it is context to you and it is relevant to you because it's yours. So the first question is, what does this mean to me? And you literally just write some bullet points, maybe a paragraph, maybe even two. But in that moment, you're taking the salient stuff you've just witnessed and you're converting it into your knowledge. You're taking ownership of it. The next question you ask yourself is, how does this relate to what I'm doing? Okay. Or how does this relate to what I'm currently facing? Okay. What that question does is it takes the learning that you've now taken ownership of. And before you leave the site of that learning, you contextualize it to your life, to your predicament, to your current circumstances, to your current challenges. So once you say, what does this mean to me? How does it relate to me and what I'm doing? How does it relate to me and what I'm facing? Word the question, however you want, dependent on where you're currently at. But the bottom line is, what is it? How does it relate to me? Then the next question you ask yourself is, where and how can I apply it? Where and how can I apply it? In this moment, you take the learning that you've contextualized to your life and your business and your circumstances, and now you're actively looking for opportunities to apply what you have just learned. A scary and yet fascinating statistic is that less than 5% of people apply what they learn in any given environment. So the last seminar you went to, the last workshop you went to, the last book you read even, the chances are that less than 5% of all the people that attended that or read that book actually did anything at all with what they learned. And we kind of live in this education this information world where we're constantly learning and constantly being bombarded with education and especially as business owners all over social media and the internet and you know there's a million books out there and a million podcasts and here I am one lone voice amongst it all and you know we're constantly being shown what to do and how we should do things and told this and told that and whatever it might be but the truth of the matter is we're spending all these hours learning stuff and yet we're not learning anything at all. We might remember some of it later, but we haven't learned anything at all. And not only have we not learned anything at all, we haven't done anything with it. And the reason was, is we went in, we devoured the information, we got excited, we got inspired, and then we left the site, the scene of that learning or that information, and we didn't do anything with it. And we go back to our lives, we go back to who we were before, we go back to the chaos, go back to the busy and then slowly but surely, we distance ourselves increasingly from that learning. And eventually, it becomes a book we read once. And I can't really remember what it said anyway. Or you'll remember one or two concepts, but it won't make any difference because you didn't really learn it. You just remember it. And you certainly didn't do anything with it. Less than 5% of people do anything with the information and the knowledge that they receive in these environments. You want to make sure that you are definitely in that 5%. And the way you put yourself in that 5% is by going through this process. What does the content mean to me? How does it relate to me and what I'm currently doing? Third one, where and how can I apply it? That's the power. Where and how can I apply it gives you actions. And when you take action, you've now done something powerful with the knowledge and the information that you've just received. It's so important that we do something with the learning. Otherwise, there's no point in learning unless you're just learning something for a hobby. Now, I've just said to you, I really enjoy learning now. I didn't realize I enjoyed learning, but apparently for many years, even decades, I've enjoyed learning. And I definitely learn some things for the sake of learning them. Like I just have an interest in them, nothing else. I'll pick up a book because I'm interested in the cover, the title. I've heard some good things about the author, whatever it might be, right? And it's a hobby. You know, I'm reading that book in the same way as I might go to the cinema, watch a film. I might go to a seminar sometimes for no other reason than I want to go for entertainment purposes only. 
That's okay. Not all learning has to be super applied. But I want to put you back in the driving seat so that you're choosing and deciding when you are actually applying learning, when you're going to learn something because you want it to create change for you, or you want to learn something so you can go and create change, as opposed to I want to learn something just for the fun of learning it, just for the intrigue. I went and saw Gary Vaynerchuk speak recently when he came to London. And I'll be honest with you, I wasn't expecting to learn anything at that particular talk. You know, I know what he's like on stage. He's going to do a big hoorah and he's going to pump me up. And, you know, I'm just fascinated by the guy. I like his content. I follow him on social media. I just wanted to go and see the guy live. He was coming to London. It was an opportunity to go and see him. So I went. I didn't get my notebook out and do loads of applied learning. I'm sorry, Gary, if you're offended by that. You're not listening to this, let's be honest. And I literally just went like you'd go to a rock concert. I don't go to a rock concert. I never go to a rock concert. But I wouldn't go to a rock concert to go and get some academic learning. I'm going to be entertained to have an experience. And that's absolutely okay. It's good to exercise the mind. It's good to have extracurricular activities that aren't all about business. It's not all deadly serious about applying change and everything else. It's good to have that entertainment. But when you go and spend two days at a conference and you go to that conference because you're looking to get inspired, because you know there's some changes that you need to make, but you're sitting in the audience, you spend two days there, your brain is switching off for like 90% of what you're listening to, and then you don't apply the 10% that you were listening to, you've just wasted two days of your life and you've just wasted however much money it cost you to sit in that seat for two days. You've missed a humongous opportunity to grow, to develop, to educate yourself, but most importantly, to apply yourself to create change. So once again, let's go through that. The first thing you want to do is understand Your job is to learn whoever's in front of you. They are trying to broadcast to you, just like the radio. Your job is to tune into them. Don't let your brain unconsciously tune you out or tune you in. You want to sit there and say, right, there is gold in everything this person is saying. I need to pay attention. Your mind will drift off and you have to tune your radio back in. Then you want to understand that less than 5% of people ever do anything with the knowledge they gain from these things. You want to make sure that you're in that 5% because if you are in that 5%, you're in the 5% that are actually going to create change. And to do that before you leave, before you put the book down, before you you know turn off the podcast and go and do whatever it is you're doing, before you leave the seminar, you sit down and you say, right, what have I just learned? What does it mean to me? How does it relate to me and what I'm doing? Where and how can I apply it? That gives you an action list. Then you have to be in the top 5%. Because even that action list won't change anything. You need to take those actions. You need to bring them into your goal setting. Bring them into your calendar. Bring them into your diary. Make time for them. Take action on them. And that is how you will separate yourself from the other 95% that just wasted two hours of their life or eight hours on an audio book or an hour at a seminar or even just 20 minutes on a podcast and nothing will change from them. They may have learned something, but they've learned nothing. What they've got is they remember some of the content, but it means nothing to them. Nothing will change. And then they'll go in and devour the next piece of content and the next piece of content. And they'll wonder why they're spending all this money and all this time and energy learning and attending this stuff and going to these coaches and mentors and reading all the books and going to the seminars and going to these events and listening to all these podcasts. And yet nothing seems to change. It will only change if you take action on it. You want to make sure you're taking the right action. Go through that step plan and you will be applying my applied learning formula. You take learning, you apply it, you create change. Awesome, guys. Thanks for that. Before you even leave the site of listening to this podcast, go through that for yourself. Apply it right now. I mean it. It will work. 
Go through it. You've just listened to what I've said about my applied learning formula, about learning. Ask yourself, what does this mean to me? How does this relate to me and what I'm doing? Where and how can I apply this? You get the actions, do some of those actions, and then hit me up on social media and say, damn, George, you are a freaking genius. You'll see all my social media links in the descriptions of this podcast if that's what you choose to do. I'd love to hear from you anyway. If you are a five-figure business, in other words, you're doing 30, 40, 50, 60,000 pounds in revenue, but you haven't yet managed to tip over the 100K revenue mark, get yourself on my six-figure fast-track webinar. It's a completely free resource. It's waiting for you right now. I'll take you through the six-figure mindset you need to have in place, the six-figure model you need to have in place, and the six-figure methodology that you need in place in order to take your business to 100K in revenue or more in the next 12 months or less. I look forward to seeing you on that. I'll put the link in the descriptions below. It's biggerbrighterbolder.co.uk forward slash fast track. I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, as always, be successful. Leveling up extreme business growth through raising your game. When what was once extraordinary becomes ordinary, you know you've leveled up.